If you want to swing consistently, you have got to eliminate variables. One of the biggest variables that I see from day to day is a big hip sway. In today's lesson, I'm going to define for you exactly what that hip sway is and give you a beautiful drill to help you that you can do literally anywhere to help you start eliminating that right away. So a hip sway is gonna be very simple. What I want you to kind of do is visualize a line right on the outside of this leg. And if we have this line here in the backswing, if I break that line, I have swayed away from the target. So this would be, uh, this is called a ton of different things, but we're just gonna call it a hip sway. If I have that same line and I, my hip moves too far away from the target, then I have still swayed my hips. Both of these are a hip sway. Both of these are huge, huge consistency killers because it brings in too many variables. If I hip sway outside this line, my bottom point could be anywhere in the golf swing. If I hip sway on this way, uh, on the other way, I'm gonna have to try to correct somewhere. This causes early extension over the top, fat shots, thin shots, literally everything you can think of because we don't have a nice stable lower body. Now I do wanna predicate this, um, just so you know, we studied the swing a lot here at Top Speed Golf and we know that if you put a line here, there are some players that will shift through this line a little bit and then turn. We are going to address that so that you, if you're a shifter in your takeaway or you're not a shifter, you're gonna be able to use the same exact drill. So the drill we're gonna use is going to involve a chair. Very, very easy. Obviously, you can use anything that can create a barrier. I love using a chair that has rollers on it because it allows us to really see if we're swaying and obviously if we feel it. So it's gonna be very simple. We're gonna start off with no club and what we're gonna do is we're gonna put this chair, actually let me go ahead and pull this up here on the mat with me and we'll see exactly how this works. So I'm gonna put this chair right up against my side and all I'm going to do is I'm gonna start training myself to turn without doing two things. I'm not going to bump the chair and I'm not going to get too far away from the chair. So if you can do this on camera or in front of a mirror, it would be perfectly ideal. But this, my friends, will just absolutely change the way your, go your golf swing works. You're gonna be able to find a consistent bottom point and it's, everything is just gonna get so much le less variable in the down or backswing and the downswing. So we are going to make our turns and we're gonna get a good feel for this. Now, here's a second thing because we don't want to to trade one problem for another, we can utilize this chair to stabilize our entire body. So when I'm turning over, over on the chair, the other thing I wanna focus in is on my sternum. As you can see, my sternum is gonna feel like it's over the chair. I can turn on, on this, I can turn without bumping the chair or moving away from it, but I can still reverse pivot my spine angle. So we know that we wanna have a spine angle tilted away from the target at a dress and in the backswing. So this creates another visual for us. So we, we can use this as kind of a two for one. I turn and I make sure that I don't get too much space away from the chair and I don't bump the chair away and I feel like my sternum gets over the chair. So now I've created a nice turn with a stable lower body and a good spine angle away from the target. Now, if you are a shifter, it's very simple. We move off the chair just slightly, shift a little bit so that we would be close to the chair in our shift and do literally the same exact drill. Now, the way that the shift works, let's go ahead and get rid of this chair. The way that the shift works is we only wanna have that initial shift in the takeaway. So if you are going to, but when the hands just get outside, just about outside the right leg, if you shift off the ball from here, that's completely okay. If we continue to break that line as we go to the top of the backswing, that's gonna be a hip sway. So very, very important to make sure we discern between those two. We have a line here, we either turn on it or we can break it just a little bit in the takeaway and then we don't break the new line that we build here. Very, very important. Now, once we have that feel, we need to start taking some swings where we utilize that feel. Ideally, we're not gonna swing with a chair there, we're just gonna get the feel. But now when I start taking some practice swings, I'm gonna really start stabilizing my lower body. I'm going to turn, feeling like that chair is right there. I'm gonna feel like my sternum gets over the chair so I have a nice good spine angle. And I'm gonna start making some easy swings, really stabilizing and eliminating unnecessary variables in the swing. So there we go, just a nice easy three quarter swing there where I just really made sure my lower body was stable. I even felt like my sternum kind of got over the chair. If we train that enough, we can really eliminate one of those huge consistency killers. It's a very simple drill, but sometimes the simplest drills can make the biggest difference on the course. So let's go ahead and try this out one more time. Remember, I'm going to turn, really feel like my sternum is over the chair, 
really keep that leg nice and stable and take a nice easy full swing with a very nice stable upper and lower body with the sensation from the same exact drill. Now there we go, that is actually a perfect, perfect example. I was really, really stable, my body felt really good, and I completely mishit that shot. So I have a six iron, total, total distance 196 with a six iron, I usually hit it quite a bit further than that, but I hit that, I mishit that like crazy, but because I was stable, and I didn't make the greatest swing on that, I, ha I still was able to hit a pretty decent shot at my target. And that's what it's all about. It's not always about hitting the ball perfectly, it's about, hey, when I miss hit one, am I stable enough to produce a good shot. So that's very important. So if we make sure we have that sensation in the swing, we're gonna be able to eliminate some seriously huge variables. Now the next piece is, that's our body movement. We have to make sure our hands and arms are working correctly as well. The main things we wanna do is making sure that once our body is turning without swaying, and we have a nice spine angle at the top of the swing, from here, the shaft is working the way that we want it to. That it's shallowing out, squaring up with the stable body so that I can produce the stable shots even when I miss hit the ball. Now these two moves might seem pretty complicated getting this shallow out and squared up, but they're explained very, very nicely by our head instructor and owner, Clay Ballard, in this anti-roll method uh, video. So I'm actually gonna play a preview of this lesson at the end of this video that you can see that whole lesson by clicking on the iCard that pops up in the screen. If you don't see that iCard, that's fine. You can click on the link in the description below and he's gonna go over exactly how to shallow up this club, square it up, and if you pair that up with a stable body, you're gonna have a recipe for a very consistent swing that you can actually take to the course and use. So let's go ahead and get started. So here's the bottom line. If you've been taught to roll the club in the early downswing, that causes the shaft to get steep. And that steep club causes all your problems. It causes you to hit it way behind the big hitters and way inconsistent with your quality of strikes. So you're in the tall grass and the trees and the hazards all day long. Now the great news is this. There's really only two pieces that you need to know to fix all these problems. The first one is we need to learn the proper way to square up the club face. Instead of rolling the forearms and getting steep, there's another way that the pros do this. Once you learn this right way to square up the club face, then you can shallow out from the inside and everything starts to fit together. Now I'm gonna teach you this right now in what I call the anti-roll method. You may also hear this called the motorcycle move or the tour twist, but let's walk through exactly how to do that. Now what I want you to do is go ahead and go kind of in the last parallel in the downswing. So here, I want my hips to go ahead and be opening up. I want my club to be parallel with the ground and I want my hands to be in front of my right thigh. Now when I take my grip, you're gonna notice that when I do this, the club face is basically straight up and down. So if I'm looking at it from this angle, You'll see the face is straight up and down, and my logo of my glove is pointed out in front of me. Now from there...